Hi everybody. Okay, so today we are going to talk about cutting those ties with toxic relationships, especially when it comes to family members, um, <clears throat> because we know we all have them, and I just feel like we just try to normalize all of those um, toxic things that our families do to us or say to us, and there's a point in time where, okay, joking around and having fun, all of that is, you know, pretty much, it's, it's a given, you know, and it's a given for your siblings, you know, to kind of give you a hard time and all of those things. But when it comes to other things and it comes to like when things are just too much, you know, almost like bullying, because I had a lot of that in my family. <clears throat> you know, and the, the spreading of gossip, like, I think people don't really understand that gossip is a toxic trait. There's no reason to gossip. Like, I don't understand why people really think that that is something that is a necessity to living or to bonding with an individual. Um, I, I hate that people bond over the people that they hate. And, I mean, back then, it was so normalized that that's what everybody did. And it just that was actually just an act of bullying because then you would gang up on the individual who you did not like for whatever reason that could be and you would essentially talk about them behind their backs or you would see them and you would like do all these like unnecessary things to them or like it was just dumb like it was unnecessary and it was cruel um <clears throat> Nowadays, I mean, I, I don't think us women really tolerate that shit anymore because of the fact that, you know, we know all the things that we went through when we were younger because it's it happens that way and it's not okay. And I mean, of course, for our future generations and things like that, we, we want our, our children to be better than us. We want them to have better experiences and better relationships than us. And in order for us to do that, we have to be the ones to really step out of that toxicity and give them a better life. Um, for me, what happened was, you know, I had cousins, you know, who did, you know, things and said things and aunt that said horrible things about me and all of those shit. Like, there was a time after my mother had passed away, um... I developed really, really awful cystic acne, and it was hard for me because I was an emotional wreck because my mom passed away. I was 19 when my mom passed away. My brother was 16 at the time, and it was so traumatic for me because I started building a relationship with my mom as she got sick, and I started seeing how all of the people in my family, instead of supporting us, you know, they said a lot of bad things. And I, I mean, rather if they were, you know, legitimate things to be said, and because of the fact that the way, you know, we grew up and all of these things, it's like when a person is, is sick and <clears throat> that's not a time to say specific things. And I remember you know, telling my mom how I was so fed up with the way the family treated us and the way they talked about us behind our back that I was like, I told my mom, I said, mom, if anything were to ever happen to you, like I would never speak to those people again. And my mom cried about this. And I feel she cried because she was scared that I was going to be alone or because she did the same things in her time because she didn't talk to a lot of people in the family because of the same reasons. Um, she stuck around very few, um, but that was because, you know, they were a little bit closer to her and everybody else just faded away because she just didn't want to deal with that unnecessary drama. And so she did what she had to do and didn't talk to anybody in the family. And so, and I think at the time she felt like she did feel alone and she felt like um, she really didn't have anybody to really turn to. And so even then, you know, whenever she did have somebody to turn to, they would just turn around and talk about her behind her back. When those were her most vulnerable moments when she needed help, you know, they would just turn around and just talk about it. It was fucking awful. Like, you, when somebody is coming to you authentically and struggling and ask for your help 
you don't just, you don't help and then turn around and be like, oh, well, I help so-and-so and oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Like, don't do that. Like, you don't understand how much of a blow to the ego and how awful internally in the heart that actually feels to do those things. And then you just turn around and just shit on it. Like, mm mm. So I told my mom these things that I wasn't going to talk to anybody. And, you know, with her getting upset, I said, Mom, don't worry. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. And, you know, whenever she did pass away, <clears throat> I was still connected with, with um, a couple of my family members. And I started getting the acne and it just got worse and worse. And no matter what I did, no matter the, I changed the way I ate, I changed my skincare routine, I saw dermatologists, I took antibiotics, topicals, anything you can think of, I did it. And well, whenever I went and visited one of my family members, um, of course I go just, you know, whatever. And my face was pretty, was pretty fucked up. And as I, you know, I left or whatever, and I was talking to one of my other cousins who was then contacted her and they talked and whatever. And she's like, you know, she's like, you went over there. And then whenever you left, she called me and she said that your face looked like shit. Okay. So for one, my mom passed away not too long ago. I'm struggling with a bunch of emotional shit and I miss my mom and... I come to try to get some comfort because my life was a little bit, you know, hectic at the time and sad. And the things that you go and you tell my other family members is that my face looked like shit. I cut it off there. Because for one, I already felt horrible about the way I looked and I... I hated the way I looked for a very long time. Like, I have no pictures of myself in those times. Between 19 and, I want to say, maybe, gosh, 26, I hardly took any pictures. Like, you can't find any. Because uh, I was like, no, no, no. Because I looked awful. Um, but my cystic acne was so bad that it hurt when I laid on my side of my face. It, it, that's how bad it was. <clears throat> but yeah, it, you know, so it came to the point to where I was like, I can't live like this. Like I have two sons at that time. I had two sons and I was like, I can't have my kids live like this. Like I'm not going to have them ruin my children the way they have ruined me. And I just, I just didn't talk to them anymore. I didn't care. Because I knew I wanted a better life. I knew that even though my mom was upset about telling her those things, I knew that she wanted a better life for me. And yes, even though I didn't talk to my family and all of those things, I made awful decisions. <clears throat> but I lived through those awful decisions alone. And I honestly don't think if I hadn't have made those decisions and overcome all of those obstacles by myself, I don't think I'd be the person who I am today. I'm not saying I'm the greatest person, but I'm saying that I wouldn't have been able to accomplish half the things I've accomplished if it wasn't for me leaving that toxicity. I would probably still be living in that bullshit town, going to their houses every other day. And just talking shit about my other family members when it doesn't even make any sense. And learning to be conniving, manipulative, just all that shit. Like, mm -mm. like I don't want that. That is not who I am. And I just, that's not the, the life I wanted for my children. And they would always say like, oh, well, she thinks she's better than us. No, I don't think I'm better it's not about being better. It's about knowing what is right, knowing what is sincere, knowing how to treat an individual. 
you don't treat me right, you don't have a right to be in my life. And I don't have a, you don't have the right for me to communicate with you. It's not because I'm better than you. It's not because you're better than me. It's because I don't like the way you treat me, period. So I just, I was over that. And I think that when it comes to learning to cut that off is you have to think about, is this, you know, just a simple, fun, joking, family kind of whatever, or is this something that is hurting me? Something that is going to jeopardize my identity, jeopardize the way I see myself, how I see life. And if you see life negatively or draining, daunting, when you think about your this individual, rather if it's a family member or a friend, don't do that. Don't keep going. Just be like, okay, enough is enough. And I can't keep doing this because you make me feel like I'm nobody. You make me feel like I am just the ugliest person on the planet. Don't do those things. Get rid of them. I don't care. Honestly, I've seen people cut ties with their moms because their moms are so overwhelmingly controlling and conniving and manipulative. And yes, my mom was very controlling. My mom was very like manipulative. If you don't do it this way, then you can leave. If you don't like it, then you can leave. If you love me, you do this. Like all that shit. No, I left. Like I would have left. I would have been like, mom, I love you. I will come and see you every once in a while. But at the same time, like, I don't even know how that relationship would be if my mom were, were still alive as my, as I learned to grow and mature. Um, I'm actually very scared to really think about how that would actually be. Um, however, there's no need to because uh, it's, it's not something that's happened or happening. But I do know for a fact that <clears throat> I would have never learned how to do life if I hadn't left my family because I think I would be constantly asking my family for help and they would constantly be knocking me down every time I did. A lot of people have their hard times. They're already knocked down. Why, why are you going to kick somebody when they're down? That's dumb. Help them. Raise them up. Give them encouragement. I don't know. But breaking those ties with the family member who is making you feel worthless is hard, but holy shit, is it worth it? So that is my take on that.